Hi, this is Darren Lithgow. I'm the author of TNG, and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about customizing what you can do to your site uh, to add your own look and feel without too much effort. So the most obvious thing you can do is to choose a template. I've just installed a brand new instance of TNG 11, and I have not even selected a template yet. And most of you will probably do that during the installation process. But if you've changed your mind, you want to pick a different one, or if you haven't done that for some reason, you can come into Setup, and then Template Settings, and at any time choose a new template. Now, if you forgot what they look like, click on Show Previews, and here is a nice a little preview of uh, basically what each one looks like. And it's easy to choose one and then change your mind and choose another one later. I'm going to go with number 14 for now, for the purpose of this demonstration. And there are, you'll see several things you can change here, various images and text. Uh, for now, I'm just going to save. And you'll see immediately everything in here has changed color. In order to get the sidebars to change, you need to refresh. So I'll do that. There we go. Okay. Now let's see what else we can change. Well, first of all, let's uh, first of all let's see what our home page looks like. Here's what it looks like, and you'll notice there's a bunch of fake Latin placeholder text in the middle that you can take care of later, and you can also change your own or upload your own image for the right side, put your own title there on the left. So let's go back to the uh, admin area. And you go into Setup again, Template Settings. Let's see what we can change. So, for example, we could change the title. Maybe we want to say My Lithgo Genealogy. And we could change the head subheader to say the uh, History of the Lithgo Family. And uh, let's say I want to change the photo. Now if I've forgotten what this photo looks like, I can click Preview and say, oh yeah, that's the one we're dealing with. There might be multiple photos on the page. And over here on the right, you'll notice it mentions how large this photo is. It's 260 pixels wide and 480 pixels high. So if you want to put your own photo there, you will want to make sure that it's roughly the same dimensions as that one. Otherwise, it'll come in too big or way too small. So, figure that out. You might need to use a, your own photo editor to get it to the right size before you start here. It doesn't have to be exact, just in the neighborhood. So I'm going to click Change, and over here is a button I can use to pick a file from my computer, or here's one I can use to select from the images already on the site. And it just so happens I was playing with this earlier. So I uploaded one that I'm going to use. I just click Select. And there, now the new file name is in the field. I might want to choose a caption like uh, um, uh, LC and Abby circa 1950. All right. And then down here, you'll notice the welcome paragraph. Uh, this is a bunch of uh, fake Latin text. I'm going to expand the box a little bit so you can see more. And I want you to also notice that it, at the beginning and the end are some HTML paragraph tags. So every time you want to make a new paragraph, you should surround the text with those paragraph tags. So let's replace what's in here. You can say this is my first paragraph. Now let's say I wanted multiple paragraphs, maybe two or three. I can copy, copy. You know, an HTML doesn't have to be on a new line if you don't want to. The paragraph tags are what really defines it. So I'll change this to say this is my second paragraph. And this is my third. All right, let's save that and see what we've got now. So over here, I'm going to refresh the home page. Aha! You see the new heading and the new subheading. The new image on the right and the new uh, caption under the photo. Also, here are my three paragraphs. So, excellent.
Let's go back. There's one other thing I want to mention here, and that is the his side, her side labels. If you forgot what those are, like on the home page, they're up here. And those point to pedigree charts, but it, when you first install your site, they're not really pointing to anything. In order to make it point to something, you have to come here and configure it by entering the ID and, and the uh, uh, tree, tree ID of the people that you want it to point to. So suppose you know you want it to point to your father and he's ID 345 and you want the mom's side to point to your mother and she's ID 678. And if you've forgotten, go back over to people and find them and find their IDs. If you've forgotten what the tree ID is, come over to trees and it'll say what the ID is there. So it might be something like tree 1. But in order for those links to point to anything, you need to configure these first. Okay, and then again, save it when you're in. Oh, I should also mention you change the labels. So if you want this to be the Lithgow side and this to be the Sorensen side, you can do that as well. Okay, I'll just do one more refresh to show you. Those are now updated up there. Okay, now there are a couple other things that go a little bit beyond the template settings that I want to mention. The first is text messages. So you see there are some messages on here that are not configurable from the template settings like other features. Uh, so in order to change something like that, there are a few, a few extra hoops you need to jump through. Let's talk about it. If I come back to my... Uh, this is FileZilla, by the way. I've talked about this in other videos, but this is an FTP program. It's a way I use to connect to my website, and once I'm connected, then I can see the files that are on my site over here on the right. Over on the left are the files on my computer. So first I need to find that uh, text message that I want to change. And in order to, to find this one, I first need to drill into the templates folder. And I'm using template 14, so I'm going to go in there. And here's the home page. It's index.php. And let's open it in an editor. So I right-clicked on the file. And it'll just open in a local uh, editor here. And if I scroll down, look hard enough, I'll be able to find it. It's right here. Now you're saying that's not really intuitive. I expected to see the word other features. But what's happening is that we've replaced all the actual text with PHP variables. And this allows us to be able to translate it into whichever language you've selected. So now, instead of seeing other features, you see this uh, text variable. So the first step is to copy that. Just highlight and copy. I can do like this. Copy. Close that file, because you're not going to need to edit that. And then I'm going to back up. Let's go back here. And I want to go, what I want to do now is find my languages folder. So inside languages, here's all the languages that are uh, available, and find the language that you're using. If you can't remember what it is, <laughs> go back to your general settings, and uh, in the language area, it should tell you. Uh, you might, you know, you think that might be a uh, might be funny, but really, you might be confused as to whether you're using English or English UTF-8. So that's a valid question. So I'm going to go into English UTF-8 because I know I'm using that, and in there. Notice this file called custText.php. This is where any kind of custom messages would go. So I'm going to right click on that and edit. And here you'll see there's an example, uh, actually something I did earlier with this very same uh, message. But uh, if you have a new one, you come in here and you paste it right there. Now let's get rid of the uh, echo portion. Let's uh, forget what I had done previously. <laughs> okay, so here I pasted the new text message in, and just like the example above, I'm going to say equal and my uh, cool new features. Close it with a quote and end it with a semicolon. And then save what you've done. Yes. 
Okay, now once you've saved that, you come back over to your home page and refresh it. You'll notice your new message down there. Now, if you want this to be uh, visible whenever the site is viewed in a different language, you are going to have to make a similar change in the CUS text file for each language you're supporting. So, for example, if you're also using Dutch, you want to edit the CUS text file in the Dutch folder. Uh, let's see. Enter the same thing here, but now put the Dutch translation. And then if someone changes to Dutch, they'll see the message in Dutch. Okay. Alright. So another thing I want to talk about is the colors and fonts. Now you might say, well, I like this design, but I really wish the colors were more of a blue tone instead of uh, the red that it is now. So that involves changing what's called uh, the CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets. Um, you really don't have to know too much about that, but uh, in order to see what's going on, I recommend you right-click on the text or element that you want to change. Now in Google Chrome, when you right-click on something, you should always get a menu with one of the options being Inspect. So if you click on Inspect, uh, you'll get something opening on the right or down below and you'll see all the HTML elements on the page here and down here you'll see all the CSS or style that is governing that particular element. And you can see I have the color uh, is set to a very reddish color and you can experiment here without actually changing anything like for instance uncheck that box You'll notice the color went away. It's now the default black. I'm going to put that back and I'm going to, let's say, you can make it a little more red by increasing the red component. Ooh. Or maybe I want to increase the blue component. Now it's kind of purple. Let's uh, increase both the, or decrease both the, uh, the red and increase the green a little bit. See, that's what you get. So you can uh, just experiment until you find a color that you want. Same thing with font. You know, what if I take off that font? I'm back to a default font. And you'll notice right here, up above, it tells you the exact location in your style sheet of where this block is. So I'm changing the big header block. That's the class name associated with this header. And it's in template style CSS at line 712. So let's go back to FileZilla and see if we can find that. So I'm in languages right now. So let's go back into templates, into template 14. And from there into the CSS folder. And now I'm looking at template style.css. So let's edit that. Now if you have a better editor besides this one, you might have uh, line numbers to easily help you find line 712. Now I don't, but I remember it was big header, so I'm going to do a search, and here it is. And here was the original color, the original font. Now suppose I want to change that. I'm not going to change it here because an upgrade that you install later might overwrite this. So what I recommend is you copy this entire block. and close this file and then look for the file called mytngstyle.css in the same folder. Let's edit that instead. Now here you can see you can see some instructions near the top uh, just telling you to, to uh, paste this in here and you can see I've already you know, played with this before and pasted something in there. Let's get rid of that. Paste our own new block in. Okay, so here's the block now you really don't need anything that you're not going to change. So if all you're changing is the color, you can get rid of the rest of this. Just worry about the color. Now here, let's say I want it to be more bluish. The last two numbers are the blue. First two are the red, second are the green. So I'll get rid of the red and the green and just put um, some blue in there. Let's save this file. There we go. 
Okay, and once it's saved, I can come back to my home page and refresh. Now you see I'm using this new dark blue that I added. So you can do that with just about any element on your home page or your other uh, pages in your site. Now, if you really want to make it easier or just have a fun time playing around, there's another tool called the TNG Coloring Book that's been created by another user. And you can just go and Google it. There's a link right there. And what this user has done is he's given you a way to um, point at and experiment with the different elements uh, of any template. So let's choose number two. On this page, you see you can select any little element here. It tells you all around the side what elements you're dealing with. And so, you know, for example, here's the tabs bar. Uh, where it's not uh, moused over and maybe I want to fiddle with the uh, the color so I decrease the red value and you'll notice these things are changing as I do that. See now they're going back to white but if I want to make it uh, take away all the red and take away all the green what I'm left with is blue. Anyway you can do lots of experimenting here with all the various elements and when you're done click over here on make CSS to save. Say OK. And what that does is download for you a file called mytngstyle.txt. Back in FileZilla you'll remember it was called my, mytngstyle.css. So when you find this file in your downloads and then drag it over into this same folder you want to remember to uh, rename it to be .css. So this will mean you have to either delete or rename the original file first. But once you've done that, then all the changes that you uh, incorporated in the coloring book will then be available on your site. Okay. Now there's plenty more you can do. Lots of, you can edit the code to, to your heart's content and make any changes, but uh, those things are more uh, difficult and probably out of scope for this video. But uh, hopefully this will give you enough to get started in customizing your template and um, uh, maybe a few other things. Thanks for watching.